In this Shoe Last Maker tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import uh, 2D foot models for the purpose of making custom and bespoke shoe lasts. So the first step is to hit the Import Foot button, and now you're going to choose uh, an image such as a JPEG that uh, corresponds with a 2D foot model. This could be um, a simply a tracing uh, of a foot that's done on carbon paper or regular uh, white paper, and uh, or alternatively, it can come from a 2D foot scanner. So this one uh, I'm selecting comes from a 2D foot scanner. And the first question that comes up is uh, asking if it comes from a flatbed scanner. And if it uh, if it's the case, then it needs to re reverse the image because or flip the image because it's uh, taking a picture from the bottom of the foot. So we'll say yes. You see it flips. Next question is uh, the glass raised. Uh, the Flatbed scanners are calibrated to give an accurate width when objects are directly on the glass. Um, and if the, so, if you're raising up the glass to make it like a, with a stronger piece of glass that uh, can actually be uh, a weight can be bearing on it, then um, then you'll need to make some adjustments. So, so, if you were to say yes to this question, then it would allow you to choose objects of known width on the glass and say what that width corresponds with and it will stretch the image accordingly. But in this case we'll just uh, say no. And then you're given another opportunity to uh, adjust the width, uh, to scale the image in case this is coming from some unknown scanner and uh, you just have no idea of the scale then you can choose an object of known length again here. In this case it would be a, a ruler, would be a good object or, or any object of known geometry that you could ask your uh, whoever's doing the scanning to put on the glass. So uh, in this case, I know where the scanner is coming from, so I'll just say no here. And now uh, the, you follow the prompts here uh, in Rhino to uh, put in the various landmarks. And now if this was a, just a, a tracing of the foot, we could just simply click the, uh, the, the landmark locations. But because this is coming from a 2D scanner, it's a little bit more complicated. As I was saying before, if objects aren't directly on the glass, then the width isn't accurate. And also, because the camera is moving along the central axis of the foot approximately, um, it's looking up and out, and it's not actually capturing the true edge of the foot. So while the actual edge might show here on the scanner, the true edge uh, can be marked by ensuring that like a dowel uh, a cylinder is put on the glass and butted up against the true landmark of the foot, and now you can see the, the bottom edge of this dowel um, shows you where the true edge of the, uh, the ball joint is. So the question says select the side of the first ball joint on the foot. So first we'll choose it on the foot. In this case the image is a little blurry. This is uh, not the best scanner this is coming from. You can get some scanners that will give you a really crisp edge coming along here. And I should also add that the scanners I'm talking about are just conventional desktop scanners which happen to be incredibly inexpensive because of the scale at which they're produced. There are also um, more foot specific uh, 2D scanners that can use that might do a better job as well and uh, and be a, a longer length to capture larger feet and of course there's legal scanners as well too but anyway get back to the landmarks here we'll choose I uh, will say it's probably around here is where the is showing up and now you choose the true edge that was butted up against the side of the uh, the the, uh, the first jo uh, ball joint here side and we'll click that now we do the same on the side the fifth side and now, also these dowels uh, have a bit of a ridge. You might be, uh, be able to find something that has a smoother surface. And the diameter doesn't really matter. Somewhere in this range is a good idea. Next landmark is the heel posterior point. This is uh, somewhat approximate just to get us started with a reasonable central axis. So you pick something up around there. The longest toe, um, toe anterior point, which is either the first or the second toe in the uh, vast majority of cases. So we'll pick up around here. And now, uh, for generating the central axis, it's going to pick up the base of the second toe, because often second toes can be de deformed slightly to medial or lateral, so we'll pick up the, the base of the second toe for generating the central axis. Now, <clears throat> adjust for weight bearing uh, expansion. If this was, uh, depending on how the, uh, the subject was uh, seated or standing or how they were bearing weight on the scanner, uh, you might choose to adjust for weight-bearing expansion. In this case, it was just uh, semi-weight-bearing, so we're going to say no. And now manually detect heel axis angle. Uh, no, we'll, we'll automatically detect it. So this allows you to essentially pick up the line that's perpendicular to the heel axis. Uh, and so let's say it's probably around here. 
And now the next question is select the heel medial. This is on route to getting the heel width for this foot. So we'll pick up this point here, heel lateral, pick up that point. And now we're able to more accurately pick up the posterior point on the back of the foot because uh, it's at the central point of the heel, uh, this heel seat line and moving backwards to find the back. It's pretty close to where we originally picked. So that's the 2D foot model imported where it's a, it comes from a scanner. It could also, as I said before, uh, just be a, a 2D outline of the foot that can come from a, um, a tracing from anybody. So now the next step is uh, to, to edit the foot. So we were able to pick up all kinds of 2D measurements off of this foot, but we're missing the, uh, the girth. So hit the edit button and uh, click the uh, left click the foot, right click or hit enter, and this brings up the foot measurement form. And so we can see, like I said, the 2D measurements are populated nicely, and it's taking a guess at the girth measurements. So uh, if the uh, you should probably have a, rather than taking this guess, you should have a tape measure to measure the girth of the foot. And now you can put those girths in and populate those here. In this case, I don't have them, so I'll just leave the default in. And the heel axis was found to be 4.2. If you'd said automatically pick up the heel axis, it would have been 6 degrees. Um, and then the, the arch length, of course. And now heel height and toe spring, this thing came from a flat image uh, scanner. So it's uh, weak, but we can still make some adjustments. Uh, so let's increase the heel height to uh, 20 and the toe spring to 15. Uh, so this is going to just be a really kind of approximate thing to give us a visualization of how it would look in a uh, in the heel height uh, and toe spring adjustment. So we hit uh, done. So you can see the image is bent. This isn't at all realistic. It's mainly just for visualization purposes to get a better idea of the shortening the effect that happens when there is toe spring and heel height uh, incorporated into the foot model. And now that we've got the foot model in there, we uh, hit the build button to build a shoe last. We choose our templates. I've already prepared uh, a couple templates that uh, make sense for this foot just to uh, the sake of saving time here for both the last body and the last toe. And of course you can edit the allowances, what kind of sock thickness, what kind of insert room, how much space on the length, width, uh, heel, ball girth, instep girth, I'll get into allowances a little more in another video, given they apply both to the 2D foot models and the 3D foot models. I thought it would make a separate tutorial. Um, and now you can choose your color, just uh, depending on whether you're doing men's or women's, the color coding system within Shoe Last Maker. Here we'll choose red for women's, and then hit the build button. Takes a moment to incorporate the templates that were selected. And you can see that the shoe last is built here. And it helps to turn on uh, a little bit of transparency so we can see through and see how that foot is fitting into that last. And so the uh, the lengths and the girths, those are all in the, 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 the widths, those are all customized already by the software based on the foot measurements that were found along with the allowances that were entered and uh, but the the style is uh, still may not be optimum for this particular foot so you can make style adjustments A common one is having to add more space on the medial side for more flared toes uh, but other than that uh, it's uh, not much not many more steps in order to uh, have this thing finalized and ready to be manufactured so that's all for this video. Uh, if you found it helpful, hope you uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.